What's up, guys? We had a chance to sit down with a legend. His name is Rob, the card father from Burbank Sports Cards in California. He's actually somebody that I've been familiar with for a couple of years. Saw him in person at this eBay event and was super stoked and knew we had to sit down for a full interview because he is one of the best card sellers in the nation. And you can learn a lot from him. I sure did. So let's dive into this interview with a legend. So we've got Rob, the card father. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. What's going on, man? <laughs> Thrilled to see you here. Um, I've seen you in the distance through various car channels and stuff, so good to meet you in person. Pleasure to meet you as well, man. Yep. It's a great time. eBay takes good care of us, huh? Yes, they do. Yes, they do. <laughs> yeah, so we're prep in here for prep for Seller Open. Um, but yeah, I've got a lot of questions for you. All right. So let's shoot. You have over 2 million cards in stock on eBay, is that correct? We have over 2 million unique cards cards on eBay. Not counting quantity. Representing about 40 million cards total. <laughs> you heard it here. 40 million cards total, 2 million unique cards. Yeah, it's stupid, I know. That is unbelievable. <laughs> uh, one of the most popular card stores in the nation, Burbank Sports Cards. We like to think so. You absolutely are. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, first off, how long have you, have you been in business? And then, how did you make this and it's kind of an empire at this point. How did you make it all happen? I mean, my origin story goes back to 1979. It was a coin and stamp shop. And my first job was delivering flyers as a 12 year old. It was uh, one cent for a car, two cents for a house. So that's where I got started. The owner liked me. And so he brought me into the store behind the counter. And I was making a buck and a half an hour. Um, but dealing with adults, which is an education you simply don't get in school, dealing with collectibles, buying and selling, yeah. you know, making offers, and, you know, by the age of 22, in 1989, my father and I bought the business. And hmm. every single day since then, just small level ups, and okay. you do that often enough, you start to build on something. and. When we first bought the business, it was coins, stamps, comic books, all those things. And I decided to be a master of one instead of a jack of all trades. We put all of our focus into sports cards. Understood. Yeah, so first off, uh, how, many, how many employees do you have now? We have about 23 that work in some form or fashion. Some just take home cards to sort and whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and some guys I've had for 16, 17 years that started when they were 15, now they're in their 30s. And they've been with me all along. And yep. it's one of those things where there's a lot of trust involved when you're dealing with sports cards that are tiny and valuable. And um, we're not looking to hire sports card guys. We're looking to hire people that are just good people because you can't okay. train that. And um, trust is number one, two, and number three in our business because you can be trained to do anything that we do within our business. Um, so when we're hiring especially, I really want to get a good feeling about those people. So that's tricky because no one seems to want to work these days. So hiring today is truly a challenge. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just, you would think it's just the opposite, but just like the restaurants out there, it's just hard to get bodies into the store. If you're an employee that does you wrong, the card father comes for your knees. Oh yeah, <laughs> totally comes for the knees. I got people too, so there's that. I love it. So, so what I, I have two um, full-time people, right? Okay. And the thought of going to three overwhelms me, or four, right. or beyond that. So, what? Uh, what systems, what processes, what things do you have in place that, that made it possible? Because it started with one. Right. And how did you continue to expand that and have those things in place? Well, as we grew, you know, it, you need to be able to delegate. And everything kind of went through me certain ways, so we had to build systems. And yeah. uh, back in the day, 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 people called on the phone with what they were looking for. There was no internet. Even fax machines were relatively new. Sure. So my mom worked with me back then, and we wanted her to be able to answer the phone and know where cards were. So basically, we, we brought in a color coding system by sport, and everything was by year, by brand, and number order. So if you knew your ABCs, your one, two, threes, and your colors, you could be successful in our store. 
and built it around mom, but then in the age of digital and internet and cell phones and stuff, we were able to scale it with the same basic tenants. So okay. you come in our store, you don't know a damn thing about cards, but once you get that information, you know within 20, 25 seconds, you're gonna find that card where it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And so I think having that kind of infrastructure is huge. So um, we built that from day one, and it's when you're selling things that are 99 cents, three dollars, ten dollars, you can't be spending thirty dollars in labor to pull a twenty dollar order. So right. efficiency is critical. Yes. And so everybody learns right away how to do that. The second thing is utilizing technology, okay. because one of the big pain points for anybody, yourself included, is images because an item is worthless unless it has an image. Yep. And so we're able to solve that by finding scanners that were high speed that could do 40 cards a minute front, back, and auto crop. Because with cards, you go so wide and you have hundreds of thousands of different things. Um, being able to utilize technology and databases, things like that, really spurred growth when we were able to go full scale to eBay and go from 100,000 to a million to two million. Yeah. Um, without that technology, it's not possible. Okay, so do you have like an, like an affiliate link for these scanners or do you just talk about them and people buy them? Um, Fujitsu loves me. And um, yeah. for years we used them and about a year ago, they found out how we use their technology you know, to digitize something almost impossible to digitize. Mm -hmm. And then they started coming at me, Rob, we have these new next gen scanners. Would you like one? I'm like, yeah, sure. <laughs> and then I'm, I, we get it. And I'm like, this thing's amazing. And so he emails, how'd you like it? I'm like, I like it so much, I'd love a couple more. And so he's <laughs> sending me more. And so okay. then we created a relationship where we did a commercial for him. Mm -hmm. And it was a really high-end commercial. And he's like, this was the most successful commercial we've ever had in the States. So we have this thing now. And when they market, they're like, Burbank Sports Cards uses our technology, which means we're the ultimate test case. If it works for us, it works for everyone. Right on. So, I mean, is, is that something that we can like put in the, in the um, description, a link to that? Yeah, of course. Okay. Oh yeah, no, they love it. Yeah. They actually set up at my card show. I mean, Fujitsu, huge company, yep. had a presence at the Burbank Card Show. And they're like, we were at the National as well. And we outsold the National like 10 to 1 at our show. <laughs> because, you know, just tying it to our brand yes. Yes. is huge. Right. So they'll have a bigger presence at our next one, which is great. Awesome. You know, because I'm all about transparency and growing the pie. I don't need to tell people how I digitized all that. But we do. Yep. So we just want this industry to grow, bigger pie, bigger slice. Love it. Yeah, I need to get me one of those. Yeah, uh, I don't have amazing. one yet. Right now the one I have is, is slow. Um, but I, I'm obsessed on eBay with average sales price. Mm -hmm. I think at your scale that has to be probably sacrificed a little bit, but I'm curious, what is your average sales price you know for eBay? Really, it's about three to four bucks, which is okay. weird, you think about it. But we sell $12,000 cards, but we sell thousands of 99 cent cards as well, yep. which kind of skews it downward. But when you move the volume that we do, it certainly adds up. Mm -hmm. And with our efficiencies in pulling cards, we can still be profitable at those numbers, yes. but they're a great entry point to our ecosystem. Yes. And once people find us and buy a few cards and go, and that was easy. Now, why am I buying from all these different people and different shipping and handlings? And, yes. You know, we want a one-stop shop and that's us. Love it. So do you have um, like objective measures for your employees for pull rates or for shipping times? Or is Not it... necessarily, but okay. my managers kind of know what's going on. There's no, mm -hmm. you need to be able to pull 150 cards okay. an hour that mm -hmm. we don't have because it gets skewed. You can get an order that's got 38 of the same card. Yeah. So you're going to one place for 38 cards and some of the orders are like, okay, it's over there, it's over there. And so it's really hard to have certain metrics for that. But right. we have an eye on the guys, um, but for the most part, it works, you know? Mm -hmm. So I don't like to micromanage if I don't have to. Love it, okay. So, how many, I have go ahead. A question real quick. Yep. How, how many cards do you sell a day on average? Five to 6,000. It's unreal. 
That's awesome. We'll sell five to six thousand this year, maybe. Yeah. So I, I have an obsession with average sales price increasing. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of it is a different model completely. Well, it's certainly increasing now with so many cards that are hitting the side of 500, 1,000. Mm -hmm. We just put a Mantle Rookie up for 125K. So that would certainly skew things That'll skew on it. its own. But, um, and maybe, I don't really follow it. Maybe the average ticket's more these days. I'm, yeah. I, I'm more of the chief vision officer. I'm not yes. always in the day-to-day -day knowing what the hell's going on. Yep. I got guys for that. But I know it's, it could be more. I don't know at the top of my head. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I just, yeah, it's a cool model. It's, I don't want to talk too much because I still need to speak later and my voice is already shot. Yeah. So. All right, let's do a, a quick, um, you've had your business for decades. Mm -hmm. You've sold through recessions. You've run your business through recessions. Mm -hmm. um, some people fear that we're nearing one mm -hmm. or some people would say we are in one. What are your thoughts on reselling in a recession? Is it possible? What strategies, do you change anything in general? Well, I think that if you stay to your core strengths and be able to um, have price points, um, people are all infatuated with the golden auctions and the expensive stuff, but collectors never go away. And people mm -hmm. will have 20 bucks, 50 to to $100 to spend still in yes. a recession. Okay. And those are the kind of people that keep you alive. And we've never left those people yes. for shinier okay. pastures. Mm -hmm. um, granted, we have the big stuff, but we still every day grind on those cards. Perfect. And, and in recessions, we tend to gain more market share. Mm -hmm. And we've, whether it was labor strikes, um, baseball going out, and mm -hmm. we tend to um, distance ourselves further from the competition. So. It's, it. Obviously, the total revs will drop, but I think the gain in market share is big. And so when you come out of it, you're in a much healthier spot than everybody else. So we've never let anybody go due to financial factors. Other factors, yes, but okay. financial, no, we okay. don't. Because it's hard to get people back that, you know, are good at what they do. So, um, yeah, that. my advice is just to make sure that you're catering to everybody because people don't stop collecting. Maybe the investing side gets a little wonky, mm -hmm. but um, collecting never goes away. Love it, thank you for that. So the card father, Rob, where can we find you? Yeah, you can find us on Instagram at Burbank Cards, um, and you can also find us just all over eBay. You run any search, <laughs> you're gonna see my logo. That's right. So, um, and if you're ever in Southern California, we're in beautiful downtown Burbank, it's got a 41 showcases. It's the coolest card shop you'll ever walk into. So would love to see you guys visit as well. Well, thank you for your time. Anytime. <laughs> Cardfather, out. <laughs>